we're going to draw the Lewis structure for X, E, F, 2. Now, kids hate drawing Lewis structures that involve noble gases because you're generally taught that noble gases don't bond to other atoms. But we can force them to, and this is a real compound that exists. What is important is that xenon and fluorine are both non-metals. They come from the upper right-hand portion of the periodic table, you know, on this side of the staircase that's written on better periodic tables than this. And when non-metals bond together, they form molecular compounds. That means they're going to be sharing electrons. It's not a transfer from one to another. To draw the Lewis structure for a molecular compound, I'm going to count the total number of valence electrons. And, uh, and then I'm going to do a few more steps, which I'll walk you through. First of all, xenon in group 18 brings eight valence electrons with it. And again, you've been taught that eight electrons make something stable already, but we can break that open, force atoms to bond with it, and then, you know, zip it back up. So we're just going to deal with the formula they gave us, okay? Fluorine in group 17 brings seven valence electrons each, but there are two of them here. Eight plus 14 is 22 electrons total. All right, so I'm going to need 22 electrons in my Lewis structure. I'm going to draw the central atom and the surrounding atoms and put single bonds in between them to start. I'm going to put my Xe down and single bond it to both of the fluorines. Step two was done. Add lone pairs to complete the octets of the outer atoms until they're full. Now I'm going to be careful not to go over 22 electrons, but we do need to complete the octets of these fluorines. I already have two, four electrons total. Here's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. And the octets of my fluorines are complete. See? Two, four, six, eight, happy. Two, four, six, eight, happy. Great. If you have extra electrons, we're going to put them on the central atom. We do. I only counted up to 16 here, and I need 22. So I'm just going to dump electrons on the central atom here. That's 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. All right, there you go. Now I've used up all the electrons. And uh, again, just dump them on the center. You've got nowhere else you can put them. If there's an incomplete octet on the central atom, we're going to move lone pairs from the outer atoms into bonds. But actually, this xenon has an expanded octet already. It already has 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 electrons around it. Xenon, as well as basically any of the nonmetals, starting with phosphorus and onward, can have an expanded octet where it has more than 8 electrons around it. It's just it's called an expanded octet, and it's a violation of the octet rule. But the octet rule really only applies to carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine, uh, you know, 100% of the time. So this is allowed. This is it. There's nothing else to do. We've completed the octet on all of the atoms, and we had to expand the octet on xenon. I used up all the electrons, and I'm done. There's nothing else to do. You did it with me. Congratulations. I'm proud of you. Best of luck.